Hi, my name is Mr. Kessler, and this lesson is going to be about the three main types of plate tectonic boundaries. We've previously learned that the Earth's crust is made up of a bunch of different plates, and each of these plates has a line around it where it meets another plate. For example, the Pacific plate meets the North American plate right here, and this line between it is called the boundary. It's very similar to a basketball court that has a line around it or a football field that has a line around it. And if you go outside the boundary, it's called out of bounds. That's it's very similar. That's where it comes from. This is a boundary. So there are a lot of cool geological activity that can happen around these boundaries. And there's three main types of plate movements. You can have plates that move apart from each other, and that is called a divergent plate boundary. See an example in this picture here. You can also have plates that collide into each other. They go straight into each other. That's called a convergent plate boundary. And then you can also have plates that slide by each other. One plate moves this way, one plate may move to the north, and that is called a transform plate boundary. I want to remind you that these plates are moving because of convection currents that are flowing within the Earth's mantle. Remember, convection currents are when heat flows, and deep within inside the Earth's mantle, the molten magma or molten rock is flowing and causing these plates that are less dense than that magma to float on top. In front of you, you have a graphic organizer that's titled Types of Plate Boundaries. We're going to be using this to take our notes on the three main types of plate boundaries. First thing I'm going to do is we're going to draw a sketch of the divergent plate boundary. That's the one we're going to talk about first. These little half circles represent the plates, and the arrows represent which direction the plate is traveling. We can also draw it like this, the direction of the movement, and just have arrows going in the opposite direction since they are dividing apart. The description or some features of the plate boundary are that they are dividing, they're going in opposite directions. Then we also want to write this, seafloor spreading and rift valleys. Go ahead and copy that down and then we're going to look at an animation of what these two things look like. We're back taking a look at the map of the Earth's tectonic plates. We're going to talk about two main divergent boundaries on this map. If you take a look at this line right here where my cursor is that goes all the way down, this is a huge divergent boundary. The North American plate is going to the left or the west. The South American plate is going to the west. The Eurasian plate is going to the east or the right. And the African plate is also going to the right. What's happening is that's causing a divergent boundary starting way up here by the Arctic, goes through Iceland, all the way down through the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. This is called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And this is mostly oceanic crust. With the exception of Iceland, all of this is oceanic crust. Remember we talked about continental crust and oceanic crust. Oceanic crust is beneath the ocean. So let's look at a quick animation about that. Here are two oceanic plates that are dividing apart or diverging apart. I'll press play here. And you can see what happens is, as the plates move apart, new magma comes up through the crack or through the fissure and forms new land. The newer land is closer to the plate boundary, and then the older land moves away, cools down, gets more dense as it moves away from this plate boundary. As we take a look back at the map, we can also see that divergent plate boundaries can happen on the continental crust. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge was on the oceanic crust, but we can also have divergent plate boundaries on the continental crust. In Africa is a great example here, and this creates rift valleys. So this line where my cursor is running over right here is a divergent plate boundary. This area here is going to the east, this area here is going to the west, they are splitting apart. And here's a quick animation of what's happening there. This is an animation of a rift valley. You'll see the land on the left is moving to the left, land on the right is moving to the right, magma is coming up, 
It's creating a rift, which is kind of like a mountain. It's splitting apart. Magma fills in the center. It creates a large valley. And then water is actually flowing in from the surrounding oceans. Look back at the map here and I can show you where that's happening. You can see water is going to flow in from the seas over a long period of time from the Indian Ocean and up here from these seas up here. It's going to eventually flow in and fill in the entire Rift Valley so that Africa is actually going to be split into two. And this is going to happen over millions of years or hundreds of thousands of years, um, but it is eventually going to happen. All right, we're back at our graphic organizer, so we want to write down some real-world examples of where divergent plate boundaries are happening. So the first one we looked at was the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and that's happening in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, where the plates are spreading apart from each other. And then the Great Rift Valley in Africa, and that's happening where the two continental crusts are splitting apart in Africa. So those are some great examples. So just to summary, or to summarize divergent plate boundaries, plates are moving apart from each other. They can create seafloor spreading, as it does in the Atlantic Ocean. It can also create rift valleys, as it does in Africa. Some examples are the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and the Great Rift Valley in Africa. The next plate boundary we're going to talk about is the sliding boundary, or it's also called a transform boundary. Go ahead and write the word transform over the word sliding here, so that you'll remember that. And the transform boundary are the ones that are sliding past each other. So you have two plates here, one's going to the north and one's going to the south, and they're sliding by each other. That is a transform boundary. You can also just draw the arrows like this to show the direction of the movement. All right, let's describe it and talk about some features of that plate boundary. When two plates slide past each other, they can create earthquakes. We're going to look at that in just a, just a few minutes here. What's happening is, is the potential energy is being stored up. Eventually, they slip past each other, and a lot of kinetic energy is created in the form of an earthquake. So you've got all that stored energy, and it's finally released into kinetic energy once an earthquake happens in the, in the two plates slip by each other. Go ahead and write that down and I'll show you some animations here. Back at our map here, we're going to look at the best example of a transform plate boundary and it's pretty close to home. It's on the western side of the United States, right along the coast of California here. We've got the Pacific plate, which is moving in a northwest direction. And the North American plate at this point is moving at a southeast direction, and they are sliding by each other. What's happening is that's causing a major transform boundary right here that causes lots of earthquakes. Let's take a look at an animation of that. So we have a transform boundary. This plate is going to be moving south, and this plate is going to be moving north. And you've got the mountains that are lined up here right now. But as they move you can see that these little earthquakes are popping up as they slip by each other. All that pressure is being released, excuse me, all that energy is being released and creating earthquakes. Here's another interactive uh, animation right here. As these plates slide by each other, they eventually slip and snap and cause earthquakes at that transform boundary. The San Andreas Fault, back on this plate right here, between these two plates is the San Andreas Fault. It's one of the most studied faults in all of the world. They say it's about 800 miles long, and this is where many, many earthquakes occur. We want to write some examples down on our graphic organizer, and the San Andreas Fault in California and in the western United States is a perfect example of a transform plate boundary. So just to summarize, the transform plate boundary, the sliding boundary, or when two plates slide by each other, potential energy is released once the plates slide in the form of kinetic energy and causes earthquakes. A perfect example of that is the San Andreas Fault. 
We're going to now talk about the last plate boundary, and that's the convergent plate boundary. And convergent plate boundary is a little unique because you can have continental crusts colliding with continental crust, or you can have oceanic crust colliding with oceanic crust, or you can have an oceanic crust colliding with a continent crust. And depending on which two things collide, different things can happen. So the first thing we're going to talk about is two continental crusts that collide together. So first we want to make a little sketch here. Here are two plates and they are colliding into each other. These are both continental plates. Okay, and we can draw the arrows to match. Some descriptive words we can use for continental plates colliding into each other are when two continental plates collide you have mountain building. Go ahead and write that down and I'll show you an animation. Looking back at our map, I'm going to show you where two plates are colliding together, two continental plates, and creating mountains. So we have the Indo-Australian plate, which is kind of moving at a north uh, northeast direction, and the Eurasian plate, which is moving in a south direction. And right here, right above the country of India and in Tibet and China, are the tallest mountain ranges in the world, and those are called the Himalayan Mountains. This is where you can find Mount Everest. Because India is slamming into the Eurasian plate, what's happening is both of these continental crusts are about the same density and they're actually being pushed upward to create mountains. Here's kind of a better picture of it. You've got this continental crust here in India and this continental crust here in Eurasia and they're slamming into each other and actually pushing the continental crust upward to create mountains. So the Himalayan mountains, the Himalayan mountain ranges, is actually still growing today. They say it grows about a centimeter a year. I'm going to go ahead and skip down to the ocean and continent first before we do the ocean to ocean. So we want to first draw a quick sketch of the ocean to continent and what that looks like. And this will make more sense in a second. This is the oceanic place, the one that's going underneath the other plate, and the one that stays above is the continental plate. So let's go ahead and draw those plates and the arrows, and we'll talk about exactly what's happening here in just a moment. Here are the arrows, and then let's write some descriptive words about it. It says the oceanic plate subducts because it is more dense and volcanoes form. Write that down, and we'll look at an animation right now. All right, here's an animation of an oceanic crust colliding or converging with a continental crust. We can see here, we know that the oceanic crust is more dense, we've already talked about that, than the continental crust. So what happens is when these two things collide, the oceanic crust, because it's more dense, actually goes underneath the continental crust. And that causes a subduction zone. That's called a subduction zone. That's where one area of the plate is going underneath another area. What happens is this oceanic crust goes underneath, it builds up lots of heat and pressure, and that water comes in and the gases escape, and it causes magma to be formed. So underneath the continental plate, this magma has to actually go somewhere, it gets released, and it actually climbs back up through the top of the continental crust and forms volcanoes in many instances. So at subduction zones or at convergent plate boundaries where you have an oceanic crust going underneath a continental crust you'll also see a large chain of volcanoes. Let me show you a real-world example of that. If we look back at our map here, over here the Nazca plate is traveling to the east very slowly and the South American plate is traveling to the west. So this is an oceanic plate, this is a continental plate, and they are colliding into each other. This Nazca plate goes underneath the continental plate at this plate boundary right here and causes this entire line of volcanoes. You can see all these little red dots represent volcanoes. So that's what's happening at a convergent plate boundary when an oceanic plate meets up with a continental plate and they collide into each other. 
Back at our graphic organizer, let's go ahead and write down the real world example of when an oceanic plate collides in with a continental plate. Right here I said there are greater than 30 volcanoes in the Andes Mountains. If we look back here, the Andes Mountains run all the way north and south along the western shore of South America. Now all these volcanoes right here are a result of that plate boundary. Okay, let's talk about ocean-to-ocean -ocean plate boundaries. Similar thing happens with an ocean-to-ocean. -ocean. You're going to have the same graphics as you do below. The only difference is when ocean-to-ocean -ocean collide together, the oldest ocean plate <clears throat> is actually more dense, and it is the one that goes underneath. It's cooled down more, and it's actually more dense than a newer ocean plate. So it's the one that subducts underneath the newer ocean plate. Let me show you an example of what that looks like. Up here, the Pacific plate is traveling north, and the North American plate is traveling south. So you have two oceanic plates that are colliding into each other or converging into each other, and you have this series of volcanoes that have formed right along here too. These are called the Aleutian Islands. You know, Alaska has that little tail. Here's a, here's a better map of it here. Alaska has this kind of little tail. This is where the Pacific Plate collides in with the North America Plate. And it creates this island arc here called the Aleutian Islands. And it's very similar to this interactive that we looked at earlier, only the volcanoes are created in the ocean rather than on the continental plate. So if we go back to the graphic organizer, we can talk about the Aleutian Islands as an example. I just realized I didn't show you the example of when two continents collide. That's the Himalayan Mountains and the Indo-Australian Plate colliding with the Eurasian Plate. So. Convergent plate boundaries, just to summarize, they collide into each other. You can have continent versus continent, or continent versus ocean, or ocean versus ocean. You're either going to have mountain building or volcano building. When you have one plate that's denser than the other, it's going to create a subduction zone. So go ahead and write that down, and we'll come back in just a second. Just to quickly summarize, we talked about divergent plate boundaries. That's when the plates are dividing apart. If it's in the middle of the ocean and they're dividing apart, we have seafloor spreading. If it's on a continent, like it is in Africa, we'll have rift valley, like the Great Rift Valley. Transform plate boundaries are sliding by each other. And when those slide by each other, they can cause earthquakes like they do out in California on the San Andreas Fault. And then we lastly have convergent plate boundaries, and that's when plates collide together. When you have two continental plates colliding together, you create mountains like you do in the Himalayan mountains when the India plate crashes into the Eurasian plate. Those mountains get bigger over time. You also can have subduction zones where an oceanic plate goes underneath a continental plate and that creates volcanoes on the backside of the continental plate. And you can also have subduction zones in the ocean when two oceanic plates collide together, like you see in the Aleutian Island chain. You'll also have volcanoes there as well, very similar. So the Earth is very much alive and, and moving, and new things are happening all the time, geological events all over the world, and it's happening right now.